hi guys welcome back to the channel um just wanted to give you guys a little introduction here my name is sheila and i am going to be cleaning up this house so i'm starting in the living room here and honestly this gets cleaned three four five times a day who knows how many honestly but as you will see through this video just as soon as i clean it someone that little mist right there in the corner is taking everything apart. So on this particular day here, we had just gotten back from running some errands and getting some groceries. And so we kind of brought them all inside and just set them here in the living room. And so it's a combination of toys and mess and groceries and such so I'm just cleaning the boys are trying to get a little bit of outdoor play right there it was a nice day and it was going to be getting cold the next day so I didn't want to make them come straight in but they also are my little helpers and so they're going to help me take the groceries to the kitchen area I do want to apologize for my voice and my stuffiness and if I sound like I'm out of breath or whatever. Um, I do have a little bit of a sinus thing going on, probably just allergies. We live in the South, so please try to just bear with me. Um, I do feel like my videos need a voiceover. This is also my first voiceover, so be kind. But... Um, <clears throat> Yes, little miss wants to play outside so bad and she's just there at the door watching her brothers so patiently and she's just the cutest thing. So a little bit about us. Like I said, my name is Sheila. I'm married. We have four kids currently, soon to be five. Um, the oldest one does not live at home with us anymore and... Yeah, so we have a seven-year-old, a three-year-old, an 11-month-old, and then I am currently pregnant. Um, <clears throat> I would like to do some pregnancy updates and things like that. So if you're interested in those types of videos, those will probably be coming. Uh-oh, a little one got in trouble for something, so I had to stop him real quick. <laughs> He's always getting into something, so you never know. And that one, he just loves the camera. <laughs> He's always in the middle of the camera. So I'm just trying to get the little toys that I can see underneath the edge of the couches. I had lifted up the couches uh, maybe the week prior and got toys out. I don't do it probably as often as I should. But whenever I see there's toys underneath the couch, I try to get them out. <laughs> as you saw, my son had put her in her playpen to try to contain her just a little bit but there is a hole not a hole like it's a meant to be hole there it unzips on the side and so of course she can always get out look she's helping mommy move the rug so that I can sweep my kids love to help me they're very helpful very good kids so I'm blessed thank you Jesus now this is what I'm talking about just as soon as everything is off the floor She's going to go and put everything right back on the floor. And that's just how it is. So I'm telling the boys they have a few more minutes to play outside because our front yard is not fenced in. We do have a main road out there. Um, I do not let them play outside if I cannot look out and see them. And so since I was going to be moving into another area of the house to clean, I wanted to make sure they came inside. So I was giving them a warning to have a few more minutes. <clears throat> now this playpen, she's always climbing in and out this playpen. It stays in the living room so that she can nap or whatever in there. My husband does work nights, so he sleeps during the day. And so her crib is not accessible for her naps. So this playpen is full of goldfish and crumbs and things that she just has in there <clears throat> and I was a little disappointed 
because I thought that there was a better angle of me cleaning out this playpen so that you guys could see the little pile of babiness that came out of it. But neither here nor there. I'm sure if you are a mom, you're well aware of what you would find. So I'm just trying to clean that up a little bit. Sweeping, I do sweep some stuff right here off camera. Like I said, I thought you could see that angle. But so I'm going into the room, I believe, to find the sheet for the playpen. And the boys are just in and out, in and out, doing their thing. It's so funny <clears throat> to watch these videos back and see exactly what they were doing when you didn't have an exact eye on them. So they're all super cute. They love their little sister. Like it's just the most adorable little thing. So here I am just going to fix up the playpen so she can play in there, sleep in there or whatever. And then we're going to move to another area of the house. So I just put that pink blanket underneath the sheet for just a little extra added like cushion because she does nap in there. And then I'm off off screen. So I had no idea until I was watching back this uh, video that my son was over there like helping clean up the little toys and stuff. And I mean, he's super helpful anyways, but I don't know if he was like, oh, let me just help pick some stuff up. I saw him look at the camera. Maybe he thought just because the camera was watching him or what. But it's just super cute that <clears throat> to see, you know, what they do and how helpful they are and, and things like that. Even when you're not around, like they always do little things to help and it's just super cute. So I'm not sure <laughs> what I'm doing off camera at the moment. Um, Something with the baby, I'm sure. Oh, there we are. So. We are now in the kitchen. Hello, kitchen. It is a mess. And there's just no explanation other than it is a mess. And I haven't been feeling well. And I've just kind of uh, neglected it. Um, Over the last few days, I had been kind of decluttering and cleaning. I think the day prior to this, I had kind of deep cleaned the dining room and stuff so everything just kind of got pushed off and moved to the side and so yeah sometimes it's just like that guys like I don't know about everyone but uh oh looks like a little man got a bath that might have been what I did in between time I just noticed he was in his pajamas so he must have gotten a bath um but yeah, I mean, being a mom is hard. Being a full-time mom is hard. Having three, four, five kids, even one kid, it's hard. So give yourself some grace, mamas. It's not easy. And I look at my kitchen and I'm like, girl, you have got to do better. Like, this is too much. But I'm trying to give myself some grace. I have a lot going on. Aaron's kids, husband, everything. I'm pregnant. I'm trying to just let things come as they come. And so here I'm going to put up the few dishes that were in the dish drainer that needed to go up. And I wanted to kind of like clear off some of the counters and sweep the floor because that takes away part of the mess. And then really all you see that I need to focus on right there is the dishes. Now, if you look past me into that laundry room. Hooey. It is a mess over there. And uh, it's kind of our catch-all. And that will be cleaned in another video. So stay tuned for that. But <clears throat> I'm at the point in my life, you guys, where my daughter does not sleep very well. And sometimes at the end of the day, I have to decide, am I going to take some time to wash all these dishes clean up this kitchen before I go to bed or 
am I going to go try to get an hour or two of sleep? And sometimes I choose to sleep over the clean kitchen. And that's just the truth. And uh, whether you would do it that way or not, completely up to you. I don't always. Sometimes I clean the kitchen versus sleep. But at this point in time, the night before this, I chose to sleep versus washing the dishes. So here we are. Looks like both the boys have been bathed and we are cleaning off the catch-all counter. So there is definitely not enough counter space in my house. <clears throat> my kitchen is very small. The next house we move into, uh, we will definitely be having a bigger kitchen because I am in there a lot. I actually love to cook. Um, my schedule routine has kind of changed a bit because my husband works nights and so he's not exactly there at dinner time and so kind of making things at a different time for him versus the kids and then it just makes me want to make kid food for the kids if that makes any sense versus making a whole big old meal and so I kind of haven't gotten into a groove or a routine but I do love to cook I'm actually going to cook for you guys in this video the kids have requested um enchiladas so I will be making my kid friendly enchiladas and actually while I was cooking my son the one that just walked past requested that I not roll them like enchiladas, but I make it more like, I guess, a baker casserole. So you guys will get to see that in this video, how I make that for them. Um, but yeah, here I'm kind of like condensing down all these little random snacks that we have. And I keep them in this little popcorn tin. It's a Christmas popcorn tin. They're always out around Christmas time. And I just find that it's a good place to kind of store the snacks, keeps anything out of them. We kind of live in the country a little bit, so I've noticed from time to time we can get like weevils and things like that. You'll notice there's a lot of Ziploc bagging going on, things like that, just to make sure that nothing gets in the food. Um, and this tin I think is perfect. All the little stacks can be contained. But they're also not just visible to where my kids just want to go and grab a snack every five seconds because they see the chips or the cookies or the whatever on the counter. But they're still there. My kids still get plenty of plenty, believe me. But I don't like the space, per se, that it takes up on the counter. And maybe at some point I'll do a DIY painting or covering or something because it's just a Christmas can it's not the cutest but as far as the idea goes I like it so our trash can is not like directly right there in the kitchen if you watched my last video you saw it's kind of like around the corner right there in the dining room and so anytime I'm doing something cooking cleaning or whatever like you saw I was kind of like um you know going through the snacks I kind of just throw stuff in the sink and then I later transfer it over to a garbage bag probably not the best habit to have but I mean hey I'm just being real that's what kind of happened so I just stacked them all right there finished organizing the snacks and then took them all over to the trash can so here I am just going to rinse the dishes and stack them on the side so that I can go ahead and wash these dishes. It seems like a lot when you looked at the whole picture, but it's really just cups and silverware, like my daughter's high chair tray and, you know, a couple bowls. Like it's not a whole lot going on. My son did have a paint day the other day and, uh, yeah, apparently he used like four rags and put all his paint brushes and everything in the sink with the dishes. So there we go. I'm going to be cleaning all that up as well. And uh, I mean, basically 
dishes are dishes I think um not sure what I need to say about this um I am going to use some Dawn and some bleach scrub out that sink real good so that I can wash the dishes I um am one of those people that washes the dishes with my water running I personally don't like to make a sink full of soapy water to wash dishes personal opinion please don't come for me about wasting water I understand I've heard it all but um yeah I just have this mental thing about washing all the dishes in the same sink full of dirty water if that makes sense I don't know what it is I've washed my dishes like this forever so I'm just going through gonna wash I usually typically wash the cups and glasses first so I'm gonna go through and just wash all these dishes and I will be back
stop with the dishes at this point because if you can look at the time, it's getting kind of late. And I needed to go ahead and get the dinner going because my kids had school the next morning. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to be making the rice, some Spanish rice. So I am just slicing up a little bit of onion. I have a couple tablespoons of just regular vegetable oil back there in the red Dutch oven. So with rice, it's two to one. Um, if you're going to put one cup of rice, you're going to use two cups of water. Now, I will say that that can vary depending on your stove. So basic rice, two to one ratio, and you put the lid on. Forget it for 20 minutes. Don't touch it. You cook it on low, simmer, lid on, 20 minutes. Forget it. Whether it's white rice or however you're making your rice, that's it. Now, that can be adjusted temperature-wise, time-wise, and how much liquid you're using depending on your stove and what pot you're using. I'm using a Dutch oven, so it's great, but couple tablespoons of oil. I went ahead and sliced up some onion. I just leave them in long slices because that's what I like. And I put in a cup of rice. So I'm going to let the rice kind of just cook in that oil. You don't want to burn it by any means, but you just want to kind of get a little toast on the rice. So I went ahead and put in onion powder, garlic powder, and I use the caldo de tomato in it. Now, I know a lot of people, when they make Spanish rice, they use the tomato sauce. And I've done it. I did it for years in the past. But I just find we like the caldo de tomato in there. And then that's it. It's not super tomato-y tasting, but it's still that beautiful orange color. It tastes delicious. And so... Here, for my stove, for my Dutch oven, I put the one cup, which my measuring cup was an actual drinking cup, whatever you're going to use, it's up to you, but I put one cup of the rice, and I put about two and a quarter cups of water for my stove, because my stove cooks very high, it's like a newer, fancier stove, it's a gas stove. So it tends to cook pretty high, so the water evaporates out a little bit quicker. So if I only put two cups, the rice is not quite perfect. Now also, generally, gen, generally, there we go, I couldn't speak for a second. I would put the lid on and cook it for 20 minutes. Normally that's what I cook, other people's stove that's what I would cook. For my stove, however, 15 minutes. This is what I do. And I think it has to do with the Dutch oven. So put the lid on. Make sure the temperature is all the way down to low. The lowest it'll go, which is still kind of high in my opinion. That's why I put a little bit extra water, a little bit lower time. I set my timer for 15 minutes because I need it to be foolproof, guys. Let's just face it. Something happened with one of these kids. I had to run off, burn up my rice. Didn't want to do it. So I always put a timer. 15 minutes. Now, do not, by any means, do not take the lid off of your pot. Never. Not to watch it, not to see if it's boiling, not to see if it's burning, not to nothing. Never. Put the lid on and forget it. Now, I would also recommend when your timer goes off, whether it's 20 minutes or in my case, 15 minutes, I turn the fire off and I still do not, do not lift the lid. Do not. Just give it some time to soak up whatever extra moisture is in there from the steam. Give it some time to rest. If you just open up that lid and get to forking around that rice, it's going to get mushy or it's just, it, just don't do it. Just don't do it, guys. I'm telling you right now. So in this other pan, while I've been over here yipping, yapping about rice, um, I just have some ground beef and I cut up a little bit of onion to go in there and I just got the ground beef. I seasoned with onion powder, garlic powder, cumin. Now I know cumin is one of those spices. Some people like it, some people don't. 
cook your food however you like it. Season up your food however you season it. I'm a heavy seasoner. I love every step of my food to have lots of season and lots of flavor. I'm not a big salter though. I don't ever use or hardly ever use table salt. Now I do have seasonings that have saltiness like the caldo de tomato, caldo de pollo, whatever. They're very salty so I don't need to add any salt. I also used the Goya seasoning. I think you saw it. It had a green lid. Amazing seasoning. It has everything in it. It's like an all-in-one type seasoning. If you have it in your local supermarket store, usually you can find it on the um, ethnic food aisle with the Mexican foods or whatever. I would recommend you get it. You can use it on everything, literally everything, eggs, vegetables, meats, whatever, all in one. So we're browning the meat over there in that pan. Here in this bowl, I'm using a can of enchilada sauce. This is just um, a no name, a uh, store brand name, enchilada sauce. And I think so far that's all I put in that bowl. I'm just going to go back through, stir, 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 break up that meat. Okay, here we are. This is a can of chili. This also is no name brand. It's just the regular store brand. Now you can see mom struggle. You see me over there struggling with my, my can opener. It's broken. It broke the first day I got it. I buy another one. It breaks. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I've gotten really good at just punching through that can turn by turn. So can of chili, chili, no beans. Like I said, this is just our local grocery store, store brand chili. And I'm mixing it in the bowl with the enchilada sauce. Now, this is not how I've always made enchiladas. I've only started making them this way about a year and a half ago. I learned from a friend. This is how she made her enchiladas with chili. And they've always been delicious. I used to give her a hard time about it. Um, that they weren't authentic enough or whatever. But hey, you know what? I made them for my children and my children love them like that. And so when they request enchiladas, this is what they want. So here I am just stirring together the enchilada sauce and the chili together. It's delicious. I promise you, it is so delicious. The kids love it. And after all, this is a meal they requested. And so they are excited. So my son there is helping me get the last little bit of stuff off of the dining room table so that um, it can get, you know, prepped and ready for dinner. So he's my little helper. He's always my little helper. Little one is in the living room with baby girl. Uh, Daddy might be awake at this point in time. I'm not quite sure. It was his day off. So anyways, here we go. Stir, stir, stir with the meat. Stir, stir, stir with the chili sauce. Rice is back there. Set it and forget it. We are not touching that rice. And yeah. So you guys, this is total mom, total hack, total shortcuts, total on a time strain. You see that bag of tortillas? <laughs> yeah, I warmed them up in the microwave. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. That's not the traditional way. And if I was going to roll these enchiladas, I would have cooked them in the oil, in the pan and stuff on the stove. But because my son has requested it, to be layered like a casserole, I guess. They don't care about it being rolled. They're just kids. It tastes exactly the same. The tortillas are just not rolled. Um, yeah, so mom hack, life hack, come for me if you want to. What ifs? Okay, so here we go. We have a little pan. What I did was I put just a scoop of chili on the bottom just so that the 
tortillas don't stick, they don't burn, they have some moisture. And then I put a layer of tortillas, I put a layer of meat and some cheese. Now I'm putting another layer of the enchilada sauce and another layer of the tortillas. And I do give you a better angle here in just a minute because I realized like, hey, they can't really see what's going on. So please forgive me, guys. I am new to this. I will try to get better with angles and, and timing and videos just cutting off and things like that. So as you can see, I have an overhead light on my stove that I had on. When I turned it off, the lighting was so much better for the video. So here it is. Layer of tortillas, layer of the meat, then there's going to be a layer of cheese. Okay, so you just saw, turned off the burner for the rice. Don't touch it. Just turn the fire off. And let it sit there. So layer of cheese it's going to be a layer of sauce then i believe i do it at least one more time if i'm not mistaken but just spread everything around make sure it's nicely coated you do want to make sure you have plenty of sauce this is not something that you want to skimp on the sauce you want to make sure that the sauce completely covers the tortilla especially on the edges because you don't want the tortillas to still be hard i am using corn tortillas because in my opinion that's what enchiladas are made with but if you don't like corn tortillas use flour whatever works for you and your family so another layer of the corn tortillas another layer of meat and is this the final layer i think it might be because i made another little pan as well Yes, this is the final layer because I'm putting the sauce before the cheese. So I'm just going to put another thin layer of sauce. Make sure around the edges and all the pieces of the tortilla are covered in sauce so that it stays nice and moisturized. And then I'm going to top all of that with plenty of cheese. We love cheese in this house. Cheesy family. What up? So... Plenty of cheese. I'm popping that into a 400 degree oven. Now everything in the pan is cooked. You're basically softening up those tortillas, making sure all the flavors just marry together, heating up that chili and stuff. And that's what it is. So here we go. I had a little bit of itching each ingredient left over. So I just took a little square pan and I'm going to make another batch now this is a smaller little batch it could be for like a lunch or something if the kids want if you have a bigger family it's probably enough for you know you would need both the pans for just the one meal but I made them in smaller batches so just doing the exact same thing I did before Forgive me, I am trying to do a voiceover while still checking that the baby is still napping. So, meat, cheese, tortillas, sauce, we're going to top the sauce, top the meat, top with cheese, and that one is going to be done. Now, I did this one in a different order. I should have laid the tortillas differently because they were like curling up on me and just a mess but hey whatever it's a casserole it's all in a dish it's all gonna bake together you're gonna be able to just scoop it out and whatever you're good to go no big deal just putting the remainder meat all together there on the top and yeah top it with cheese now this one I did not bake tonight I left it there to cool on the stove and when I put everything for dinner away I went ahead and put um what's it called wax paper wax paper parchment paper whatever you have I put a layer of that over the top and then I was out of foil I would wrap it in foil and saran wrap but it's probably not going to stay in my freezer for very long I was out of foil so I honestly put the the wax paper over the top and I put two like of the giant Ziploc bags over the pan. It was a small square pan. It actually fit inside the one gallon um, like um, Ziploc bags. Um, it just didn't zip on the one side. So I put one facing one way, the other facing the opposite way. So there wasn't an open end and I just put it in my freezer 
and it'll get eaten within this next week. It's not a long-term freezing. I wouldn't recommend to wrap it like that if you're freezing for long-term. Oh, no, look at that beautiful rice. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Ugh, I was talking through it, you guys, but I'm sure you saw it. So beautiful. So after it's rested for a few minutes, five to ten minutes, I went ahead and took the lid off. You saw it. Beautiful. Those onions just come to rest on the top of the rice. So good. And I take a fork and just kind of fluff it. So I fluff from the edges, pull it towards the middle and fluff it. And then you can give it a little stir and it's good to go. Stop. So here I'm just inserting some pictures because my battery died and I didn't know when it had died or what you got to see. So I'm inserting pictures from dinner and that was it, guys. My battery was dead, but that was it. I just want to thank you guys so much for watching. Here is our completed dish for today. Um, if you like these clean and cook with me, please let me know. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment what you would like to see, and I will do that for you. I enjoy cooking. I love spending time with you guys now in the comments, and everything's so nice. So please just like, comment, subscribe to my channel and let me know down below what you would like to see and I'll talk to you guys later thank you so much have a blessed day love you guys bye